WHBF is local for you. This is Local 4 News This Morning. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I'm Sierra Cersei. And I'm meteorologist Tyler Ryan. Uh, Dustin's kind of feeling... Uh, unwell. Under weather today. Yeah, so hopefully he's able to get some rest on the perfect rest day because we have rain all day. And there. that's what I was going to say. He he yeah. lucked up because today mm -hmm. is definitely a perfect rest day yeah. because we have some rain. It's chilly. The rain is kind of misty right now. So is that rain actually going to turn into actual raindrops or are we just going to keep that misty uh, rain flowing? Yeah, no, it will. We're going to see steady rain. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll show you guys here in just a little bit on like what is coming. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you went outside and you noticed that mist, right? Yeah. So uh, you're going to notice also the chillier temperatures. Mm -hmm. So grab a coat, uh, the jacket or it's something. that mist to get you sick. Yeah, mm -hmm. it can. That mist will get you sick. Just, you know, Dustin's a prime example of it. Uh, no, hopefully he is feeling a little bit better. But, yeah, no, we're, we're tracking that mist this morning. But we are also going to be seeing um, steady rain over the next several hours. And I'll show you that in just a second. But right now, I want to point something out to you. Look at these. These are temperatures, right? Upper 40s. Well, nearly 20 degrees cooler than what we were 24 hours ago. And you can see that here on our temperature change map. 18 degrees cooler in the Quad Cities. But the further west you go, Fairfield, 27 degrees cooler. Des Moines, you're 31 degrees cooler. So we have that northwesterly flow bringing in that cooler air from the north. And that's what we're going to be seeing today. It's still not going to be a horrible day. I mean, highs getting up in the mid-50s. Tomorrow, upper 50s, sunny skies return to the forecast on Wednesday. Uh, but with that said, we are tracking those rain showers today, so grab the rain gear as you step outside and that coat, of course. Looking at the radar, you got Princeton over here, got a few showers working their way on in, as long as Equani, uh, Galesburg, and down at Peoria, and a little bit of this green, a little bit of noise, but yeah, we are picking up some mist in here in the QC, but I mentioned steady rain showers just now entering the southern half of Iowa on the border of Iowa and Missouri. Big time rain. You, lots of yellows and oranges showing up. That's going to be impacting us later on. I'll let you know when that is coming up in your local pinpoint forecast. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump straight into some developing news for you this morning. We have a lot of news to cover for you this morning. So, an East Moline police officer attacked and injured. This was Monday night during an investigation. This was around 6 30 on Morton Drive near 19th Street in East. Moline. Officers say and officials say Sergeant William Lind tried making contact with the Rock Island arson suspect. The suspect, Adrian Rogers, attacked Lind before running away. Officers then found uh, Lind unconscious with head injuries. He was hospitalized and now uh, his injuries are considered to be life threatening. Just before 11 p.m., this man, uh, this is a suspect, Adrian Rogers, he was found in Kelowna and taken into custody. In addition to the arson charges, Rogers is charged with attempted murder and aggravated battery to a peace officer. He's now in Henry County Jail on a $1 million bond. A few hours later, a fire on West 2nd Street near Sturdivant uh, a little before 10 p.m. Our team did not see flames or smoke there, but we could see hoses being taken toward the back of that structure that you're looking at on your screen. A mid-American truck was on the scene there. No word on any damage or injuries. A car left the road and ended up in a ditch. Uh, this was shortly after midnight in Rock Island on Andalusia Road near Centennial Expressway. Traffic blocked off for some time in the direction of Andalusia. That caused some noticeable delays there. No word on any injuries. And for all of these stories, we'll be sure to bring you some updates as soon as we get more information. Bettendorf firefighters are now investigating a house fire from over the weekend. Early Sunday morning, firefighters were called to Brambleberry Court. Crews arrived and they saw heavy smoke and flames coming from the back of that home there. Thankfully, no one was hurt. The two people who live in that home were able to get out safely. There was uh, fire and smoke damage throughout that home. We now know the name of the man Illinois State Police shot at uh, at a home in Morrison early Friday morning. An update for you this morning. Investigators say 48-year-old Aaron Link was armed and shot by a state trooper. State police say there was a warrant to look for methamphetamine at his home. Officers say they heard gunshots as they were going inside the house. They aren't releasing the name of the woman police found shot in another room. She's now being considered a witness. And this is a friendly reminder for you. You see news happening for it. It's for how can you do it? Download the free Our Quad Cities app. Check out stories you haven't seen on TV just yet. Right now, read about Front Street Brewery's 30th anniversary. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook and, of course, give us a follow on Twitter. 
This is exciting news for us here in the Quad City. So a new high-tech machine is coming to the Rock Island Arsenal and is getting the world's largest 3D metal printer. So this printer can do a lot. It's the printer and it's going to be called the Jointless Hole Large Format Tool. So what this will be able to do is to print parts up to 30 feet long, 20 feet wide, and 12 feet tall. So some pretty big things there. They say the machine will make the arsenal more efficient by sending equipment out in larger pieces. Bustos and U.S. Senator Dick Durbin were also at that announcement. Uh, they talked about the benefits of that 3D printer. The arsenal doesn't have the machine just yet and is expected to be fully operational by next spring. So inflation, the rising prices of natural gas and propane and electricity is hitting all of us now and all that will cost you some more to keep your home warm this winter. And there are some things that you can actually do to try to save some money at home. Local Force Melanie Anderson now reports that buying some different equipment could actually offset those higher prices. Take a look. A recent report from the U.S. Energy Information Administration projects compared to 2021, utility costs will be higher. Heating bills will increase 28 percent, heating oil will increase 27 percent, and electricity will increase 10 percent. So they are predicting heating costs to go up this winter, but it is a prediction and we're seeing it happen already with everything else, the cost of all, all goods and services that we're using now. Ben Bocox has been with Doug's heating and air conditioning for 20 years. It's a good business to be in. Um, It'll always be here. It's not going anywhere. People always need heating and cooling. Over half of U.S. households rely on natural gas for heat, and just over 10% rely on heating oil or propane. Bocock says many homeowners are taking advantage of some alternatives to help with the cost of natural gas. Things that our customers are doing and things that we are doing to help our customers is a lot of our customers are going to what's called heat pumps or dual fuel. So that unit there will actually use less natural gas. It uses electricity to heat your house. Depending on the units, uh, we can get them to go pretty low, below freezing. A lot of your systems, though, will go down to 35 degrees. So that helps the system. That helps people save a lot of money on natural gas costs. Another way occupants have saved is by investing in humidifiers. So we were installing a lot of humidifiers. A moist home produces less bacteria and harm and viruses to the, the occupants of the home. And it makes the house feel warmer. So you have a nice humid home holding around 40 to 45 percent humidity. That will allow you to turn your thermostat down a couple degrees and save you on your utility costs. In Davenport, Melanie Anderson, Local 4 News. Some really good tips there on how we can all save a couple of bucks. So HVAC companies also encourage you to check your furnace and air filters every 30 days so you can avoid those big costly repairs and to have routine maintenance every year as well. We're tracking some rain this morning. You knew that was coming and it's on the way, especially down in Missouri. That All that rain that we're tracking, that's going to be impacting us. I'll let you know when that is coming up right after this break. WHBF is local for you with Dustin Nolan, Sierra Searcy, and meteorologist Tyler Ryan. This is Local 4 News This Morning.